Welcome and hello to this linguistics podcast presented to you by Adrian, Walter and Andrea from the University of Freiburg in Germany. Let's jump right into the podcast topic. The Action Sentence Compatibility Effect, the ACE. Linguists have long been investigating how we, as humans, can make sense of the words, objects and events around us. Or, putting it differently, how language becomes meaningful to us. Now lately, the two famous cognitive linguists, Arthur Glenberg and Michael Kashak, have discovered an interesting effect which grants language as a whole in action. They called it the Action Sentence Compatibility Effect, A-C-E. Let's begin with the main theory which triggered this linguistic expedition. Consider these two examples. Hey Peter, could you please hand me a towel so that I can dry my feet? Sorry buddy, I don't have one, but uh, take my shirt instead. Ah, thank you. Darling, can you hand me a towel please? Sure. Here's a bucket. What? Why does the first example make sense to us and why doesn't the second at all? Our common sense seems to give us a satisfying idea why. You can dry something with a shirt, but not with a bucket. But there is also a scientific explanation for why the examples you have just seen make sense or not. Glanberg and Kashak post a hypothesis, the indexical hypothesis, that serves this scientific explanation. This hypothesis claims that making sense of words, objects and events is always underpinned by a three-step process. The first step is to index symbols to reference. In the first example, the word Tau is connected to its physical referent. The second step is to construct possible interactions of bodies and objects. These interactions are also called affordances, an important term here to remember. The third step is to mix these possible interactions with different reference. They have to afford the same function, in our examples, drying. And with a t-shirt, you can dry your feet. In our first example, Peter mixed his t-shirt and the need of his friend to dry his feet, who originally requested a towel. But the husband in example 2 made an error when he was combining a bucket with drying. There is no possible interaction between a bucket and the wet woman avoiding drying. These three steps are the foundations of the indexical hypothesis. In order to prove the indexical hypothesis, Glenberg and Kashak conducted an experiment. Participants were presented with a series of sensible and nonsense sentences, and they were asked to determine, as quickly as possible, whether each sentence made sense. The nonsense sentences made no sense at all, like boil the air or drink the bread. The sensible sentences all described a movement that implied a direction towards or away from the body. For example, the imperative sentence open the drawer implies a direction towards the body. Whereas the imperative sentence, close the door, implies a direction away from the body. There were also sentences that described transfers, like I gave you the book, which implies that you take the book and move your arm towards your body. These are the concrete transfers, but there were also abstract transfer sentences where no physical action is involved. For example, when somebody tells you a story, he transfers knowledge to you and again it implies a movement towards your body. 
people then had to press a button on a box. The box looked like this. Two buttons to indicate if yes, the sentence makes sense, or no, it doesn't. As long as the middle button was pressed, one of the sentences appeared on a screen in front of them. Then they pressed the yes or the no button to indicate the sense of the sentence. The reaction time was measured. The idea was that if the sentence implies a different direction, then the direction in which they would have to move their hands to press the button, it would take them longer. They also switched the response direction from time to time, meaning that sometimes the yes button on the box was near the body, also called the yes is near condition. And sometimes it was far away from the body, also called the yes is far condition. Let's have a look at the results. There are three different diagrams. The imperative sentences like close the drawer, the concrete transfers like Jake gave you the book, and the abstract transfers like Jenny told you the story. Let's have a closer look at the concrete transfers. When participants had to react to a sentence that implied a transfer away from the body, like you gave the book to Jim, it took them longer to press the yes button in the yes is near condition. And in the yes is far condition, they were faster. The effect shows in all the transfer type sentences. This is good evidence for the indexical hypothesis being true. At least the understanding of simple sentences is supported by concrete bodily action. But how can this theory be applied to other language phenomena? Again, there are three ideas to extend the scope of the indexical hypothesis. The first idea proposes that the use of language highlights new aspects. When something is being said, a situation or circumstance is changed. New perspectives are provided. New possibilities for interactions are revealed. Our well-known affordances. The second argument presumes that we are constantly using causal language or reasoning while communicating. This reasoning is transferred as actual physical pushes and pulls that influence our language in everyday life. An example would be the sentence Mary convinced John to invest into the stock market. The third idea that explains how our hypothesis can be extended is probably the most obvious. It can be observed in basically every conversation. While talking, visible movement in language is used. Gestures or simply pointing in a certain direction represent an explicit bodily identification. Just watch the physical movement of the next person you are talking to. These three ideas serve to extend the scope of the indexical hypothesis. Glenberg and Keshak undertook this linguistic expedition in order to prove us that all kinds of sentences, words or utterances can have an impact on our understanding of language and how it can change perspectives. Isn't this interesting? How our way of communicating with family, friends or strangers is connected to our bodily movements and thus shapes our social living and our everyday lives. We hope you've enjoyed this linguistics podcast. Bye-bye.